Namaste. Our group visited a Hindu temple. And in the Hindu temple, we saw many rituals. But the one that we're going to talk about today is the Nitya ritual. So, the central act of Hindu worship and Hinduism is puja. Puja is basically a broad ritual that is observed by Hindus to bring the gods and devotees closer together. It exists for devotees to show the Lord how appreciative they are for the gifts that they have given us. Puja has a structure, as well as a form and its own rituals around it. There are many forms of puja, and the ones that we saw was called Nitya Puja. Nitya Puja is a big puja. It's a daily prayer that is observed generally in every temple. Nitya Puja is meant to evoke feelings of love and adoration, as well as appreciation for the Lord. Some of these rituals in Nitya Puja is Shocha Upachara, which is done to Lord Ganesh, the Pandit reading from the Vedas, uh, Darshan to other devotees, the Kalash, the Thali that's decorated with Tilak, Kumkum, Vibhuti, Diya and offerings, and Arti. My part I will talk about the praying to Lord Ganesha. Before starting any prayers, always pray to Lord Ganesha, the one with elephant head. It's called Shosha Upachara Puja. Ganesha is one of the most popular deities in the Hindu religions. Lord Ganesha is also known as Ganapati and Biyata. The son of Siva and Parvati, Ganesha has an elephantine countenance with a curved trunk and big ears and a huge pot belly body of a human being. He is the lord of success and destroyer of evil and obstacles. He is also worshipped as the god of education, knowledge, wisdom and wealth. In fact, Ganesha is one of the five primes Hindu deities, Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva and Duga being the other four, whose idolatry is glorified as the Pachayatana Puja. For the reasons why we should pray to Lord Ganesha first, there are two methodologies as to why we worship Lord Ganesha. Firstly, incidents of how Lord Ganesha got his elephant head by refraining Lord Shiva from entering into his house. After Lord Shiva replaced Ganesha's head with an elephant and brought him back to life, he bestowed Ganesha with divine powers and declared that no puja or good words would ever be deemed complete without invoking Lord Ganesha's name and blessing. Hence, Lord Ganesha became the Pratam Puja or one of the one, or the one who is worshipped first. Secondly, a rest between Ganesha and his elder brother, Katiyakaya, by circling the universe, the one who returns first will be declared the winner and will be worshipped first. Lord Ganesha being the intelligence one, cycled around his parents because for him, his parents were the universe. So Ganesha was declared the first winner and hence Lord Ganesha is worshipped first. So now I'm going to talk about the symbolism of Lord Ganesha. The first is elephant head. It is a representative of intellect. The trunk is a symbol of ability to discriminate between things. It is also able to be used for big or small tasks equally well. The next is open palm of Lord Ganesha. This is a gesture of blessing. And the sweets here represent the enjoyment of life and the sweetness of the realized self. And the next, the most significant is the mouse. Some say the mouse, which is Ganesha's vehicle or mouth, represents being able to chew through any problems. Others say it represents desire and Ganesha's mastery over desire. It can be intellect, which secures into every little corner. It can represent how the wise Ganesha does not look down on or see anything as unworthy. Others say the mouse is an important vehicle, just as our bodies are imperfect but can still reach the end goal. The mouse is like a mantra that can cut through the ignorance. Devotees offer Ganesha sweet, sweets such as modaks and small sweet balls called ladus. He is often shown carrying a ball of sweets called modak patra. Because of his identification with color red, he is often worshipped with red sandalwood paste or red flowers. Durva grass and other materials are also used in his worship. So now I'm going to talk about the first ritual, which is bhajans. A bhajans literally means sharing. However, it also refers to any song with religious theme or spiritual ideas in a regional Indian language. A bhajan has no prescribed form or set rules. In other words, it is in free form, normally lyrical and based on melodic braggers. It belongs to a genre of music and arts that developed with the Bhakti movement. 
Ideas from scriptures, legendary epics, the teachings of saints, and loving devotion to a deity are the typical subjects of bhajans. And it's usually a group event with one or more lead singers, accompanied with music and sometimes dancing. A bhajan may be sung in a temple, in a home, under a tree in open, near a real bank or the place of history significance. A bhajan in Hindu traditions is an informal, loosely structured devotional song with music a uh, regional language. They are found over India and Nepal, but are particularly popular among the Vaishnavism sub-traditions such as those driven by devotions to avatars of Vishnu such as Krishna, Rama, Vitala and Narayana. Now I will talk about the second part of the daily ritual, which is the Nitya prayer. Devotees do the Nitya prayer, which is a daily prayer that involves making offerings of fruit, water, incense or clothing to a deity. There are different forms of puja, individual puja, sunrise puja, which you do at sunrise, uh, and puja where you do prayers to Kali in West Bengal, or where you do prayers to Sri Malai Perumal, and this was taken in Tamil Nadu. There are a few items that you need while performing puja, and this is a list. First, you would need kumkum, you would also need turmeric, akshantam, where you mix a little bit of kumkum or turmeric and ghee or oil in rice. Next, you also need sandalwood paste, which is this. You also need fruits and flowers, bitter leaves and bitter nuts, which is this here. And pancha patra, uh, preferably silver or copper plates, a tumbler, a spoon, which is called udrani in Hindi, and water. So the third ritual of our assignment is the recite mantra. Devotees can recite mantra such as Gayatri Mantra, Maha Mantra. Mantra is a word or sound repeated to aid concentration in meditations. Please will read from the Vedas, which is a holy book, one of many. Okay, so what is Vedas? Vedas are also called Skruti, which is um, what is heard kind of literature. It distinguishes them from other religious texts, which are called Smriti. There are four kinds of Vedas, which is the Rig Veda, Yajur Veda, the Sam Veda, and the Attar Veda. Each Veda has been sub classified into four major text types, which is Samhitas, which are also called Mantras and Benedictions, and the Aranyakas, which is text on rituals, ceremonies, sacrifices, and symbolic sacrifices. The Burmanas, they are actually commentaries on rituals, ceremonies, and sacrifices. And lastly, the Upanishads. They are texts discussing meditation, philosophy, and spiritual knowledges. Another part of the ritual is the Kalash. A Kalash is a pot which is typically made of copper or another type of metal. It's filled with water and decorated with mango leaves and topped with a coconut. Um, it's often decorated with an ornate cloth or flower garlands. There is also a thread tied around the neck. It's often called the Puna Kalash, which means complete vessel. Um, the vacant pot represents earth, while the water inside the pot represents primordial water. The mango leaves and the coconut represents creation, while the thread represents love that binds all creation. Devotees worship the Kalash, because the Kalash is believed to contain Amrit, which is the elixir of life, and as such, it contains holy water. There's a prescribed manner of disposing um, the water in the kalash after the worship or rituals. Part of the water is sprinkled on the premises to clean the premises, while the remaining water is used to water the tulasi plant. So overall, it was a really different experience for all of us. and um, We were able to experience a whole different culture. And I'm sure we will all remember this experience. We went into this assignment without having any knowledge about the Hindu ritual. And I'm pretty sure we learned more than we thought we would. We came out more informed and appreciative of a different culture. So Malaysia is known to be a very diverse country. And we learned that we are incredibly lucky to live in a country where other cultures are not only accepted, but we also celebrate and appreciate them very much.